It's not only HMI's lead inspector for business studies who thinks that balance sheets are difficult to teach creatively. Many teachers would agree. There are some subjects in, I suppose, in, in most disciplines, but certainly in business, which are, um, by the very nature, they're beyond most kids' experience. How many children aged 14, 15, 16 actually have to prepare a balance sheet? David Connolly's devised a pair of lessons which use topicality and relevance to help his Year 11 pupils at Dixon's City Academy in Bradford to get through this element of the GCSE Applied Business Syllabus. Leeds Football Club, you might remember, had a, a very, very clever solution to some of its financial problems. And um, they sold it to the government and rented it from them and what? Round. Often, David's first task is to correct pupils' preconceptions about balance sheets. The students themselves have a misconception that teaching finance is the same as being taught maths. And so those students who have decided already before they come to the lesson that they can't do it. And you've got to break that barrier down, and that's the most difficult thing. This programme shows how David's lessons engage pupils in the traditionally dry and difficult area. And you can find his lesson plans and other helpful advice on the Teachers TV website. To Yorkshire for you'd get the uh, the bill out and you go right. This person here had a salary, so you'll have to pay 99p extra. And you split it because what you're working out is your liability, your individual liability. The first lesson is a catch-up for a small group of pupils. We all recognise that a balance sheet is nothing more than a financial health check, and that's a very important word, health because when we talk about businesses, we often talk about them like they're real people. I think it came to me one night when I was watching TV. Uh, I think it was um, uh, some sort of doctors and nurses type soap, and someone talked about someone being um, healthy and, and in the pink, and it reminded me of being in the red and in the black. And at that point, I suddenly thought, what a great way, what an analogy to use with kids. We talk about businesses like they're healthy. Now, the healthy businesses are the ones that have got money. If you read any GCSE textbook, they pretty soon die straight into the numbers. And, and one of the things I've learned is, is avoid bringing the numbers into the lesson too early. Think of how much in finance you can actually understand without needing any numbers. A calculator will deal with the numbers in an exam. What you want them to know is the methodology. What you find is whenever people describe businesses, they tend to talk about them like they are this living, breathing patient here. All right? And they talk about them as having, and you'll have heard it yourself, if you've got a healthy bank balance. What we wanted them to understand primarily, and it was a key objective of the lesson, was that um, the balance sheet was nothing more than a, a health check, something that you could do at any time in the year as a way of identifying how healthy the business was. If you were a patient and you thought that you had some sort of ailment, you'd probably take yourself to your doctors and say, Doc, I've got a bit of a rash, and they would hopefully do, do some tests on you. And the business is just like that. Only the money in a business is the blood, if you think of it like that. If that money doesn't keep pumping around the business, then what happens is that blood stops flowing. And the minute that blood stops flowing, you've got a real problem. And that will be reflected in the balance sheet. Businesses are living entities, and we want the kids to understand that. And they relate to um, the, the idea of a, a, a human being more than they do some cold, nondescript numbers on a, on a piece of paper. We're going to do a quick exercise just to illustrate the point. OK? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at Assets and liabilities. The next stage then is that you would, you would deal with very simple terms like assets and liabilities, fundamental to the teaching of a balance sheet. And again, the best way to do that, in my experience, is to use examples which the kids themselves can relate to. Work out which of those things in there you own, and then not just that, but try and put a price on how much they're worth. If you were to sit students down and again start talking about real business assets, most students will, will struggle to keep up and, and understand assets in the context of a real business, but they can all explain examples of the things that they own. And more importantly, what you tend to find is they'll readily start giving you back numerical answers to explain the value of those assets. And you're already on your way then to bring it into a later session, the number element. Give us one thing on your list. Um, MP3 player. I've got an MP3 player, OK. How much is an MP3 player worth? 40 quid. 40 quid? Before using, like, big numbers, it's easier to get a hang of what it actually is, asset and liabilities are, because uh, after we've grabbed the concept of it, it's much easier to put into practice with the numbers. All right, so we've got a PC. How much for a PC? That's got to be a bit pricey. Mm, how much have About 500. 500? I wouldn't be surprised. 
Right then, if we just have a quick look then, how much are we talking about? We're talking about 40, 140, 200, 700, 790 pounds. That's how much we're saying that you're worth. We tend to find that kids' full attention is on the board and they're probably listening as much as they'll ever listen in a lesson because this hasn't come from page 73 of a textbook. So if you need some money really quick, either to um, save for a special holiday or buy someone a special present, your option is to look at the things that you own and say, right, well, what if I was to sell any of these, how much would I get for them? So all a balance sheet is saying is how many assets do you own and how much are they worth? Next, it's time to introduce the class to the idea of liabilities. Imagine you and four friends went to a fast food restaurant and you're the person who gets sent to the counter to uh, take the order. You've asked the, uh, the girl behind the counter, I'd like five lots of fries, three lots of, uh, three burgers, all but one person wants a Coke and uh, one other person wants a salad. When you get to the counter, what does the person behind the counter not know? Who wants what with what? Who wants what with what? And what you find with a fast food restaurant example is that they can all relate to it and the liability is really just another way of explaining money you owe. And there's no better example, I don't think, than going to a counter and paying for something. On average, it's going to cost each of you £3.36. How would you split the bill? Like equal between who's bought what? The next activity was a sort of plenary, and that particular plenary was a way of just ensuring at that point in the lesson that the students had, in fact, distinguished between assets and liabilities. So we just put on the board some different examples and asked the students to explain which they were. Premises. Why do you think that? Because you're paying to the, the rent. You would pay the rent on it, I absolutely agree. Machinery. Asset. It's an asset, OK? Once you've got machinery, that's the same as your computer, isn't it? That's your machine, that's your DVD, that's your MP3 player. All pieces of equipment, you can turn them into cash and sell them. I like how he relates the business to like a person and like the health of a person because everybody knows what happens when you go to the doctor so if when you sat in the exam you can think right this bit is the same as this bit it really helps because it brings it home for you. And from this point onwards for everything we do in finance I want you to think of a business as a person and we're going to describe that person's health and we're going to do it either by looking at their balance sheet, by looking at their cash flow or <clears throat> by contributing um, some work towards break-even. If people were to say, how healthy are you, how would you work out whether you are healthy or not? How much exercise you have. Exercise to a business activity is important. If the business isn't seeing a lot of activity, if there aren't lots of customers, lots of orders, that could be a sign that things aren't too healthy. Hey, first In the next lesson, the whole class are brought back together and David moves on to an example from the real world continuing the process of identifying assets and liabilities. Well, you're all familiar with uh, Local Football Club, which has had a few financial difficulties. A few of them have. On the board at the moment, what we've done is we've listed some typical assets that a typical football club might own to make sure that they could then take their knowledge and apply it to different business contexts. We're just going to give them a typical business context. Football ground. An asset. An asset, OK. Money which you owe for a new player. OK, what do you reckon? Liability. OK, so we're going to have to pay somebody, another club maybe. Once the students have, have identified the two lists, you're ready then to start inserting some very simple numbers. And it's very important that the numbers you introduce are very simple. Um, we don't want them to get, again, um, distracted by complicated numbers. We're going to give you a um, list of numbers like that. All right, nice simple numbers which explain now the values of some of the assets, now that we're clear on which is which, and also the value of some liabilities. What I haven't done is I haven't divided them into which. So I'm going to give you a sheet at this point which will look like that, OK? And on the sheet, all I'd like you to do is work out which are the assets and which are the liabilities. And not just that, but if you think it's an asset or a liability, and then we need to put the value and total it up. And at that point, you're on your way to constructing a very simple balance sheet. Gemma, you've, you've got a full list there. Give us uh, any asset and its value. Football ground, 80,000. All right, so the ground. It's a very simple way of proving to students what you first taught them, which is that a balance sheet shows how healthy your business is. And the best way to illustrate that is to get them to add up total assets, total liabilities, and compare the assets to liabilities figures. How many times bigger are our assets than our liabilities? The answer to that being what, Faisal? Two to one, all right? Twice as big. In other words, for every pound we owe somebody, we have two pounds to cover it. 
So we've got twice as much assets as we have liabilities. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up an example of a, a balance sheet, as you might expect to see it in, in say, an exam or a, or a real set of accounts. We then would, would look to put up on the board a, a typical but very simple balance sheet. At this point, what you really want the students to understand is, is the format, the actual structure of a balance sheet, so that you can then go on to um, prepare them for the past paper questions. Okay, now your parents sometimes might have financial problems and what they'll do is they'll go down a list of things that they can do to get themselves out of a financial mess. And um, sometimes one of the first options you might think of is, well, maybe we could sell something. Okay, so you might sell the car and trade it in for a second-hand car. Leeds Football Club, you might remember, had a, a, a very, very clever solution to some of its financial problems. Um, right. We sold it to the government and rented it from them. Sold what? The ground. They sold the ground. All right. Now you've got to ask yourself, as a football club, if we sell our ground, what will that leave us with to play in week out, week in, week out? Yeah, but uh, didn't part of the contract say that? They had, they had to rent it to Leeds, and if when they had enough money to buy it back, they'd be like the first option to buy Excellent. it Excellent. That's exactly right. Topicality in a subject like mine is crucial. What you tend to find is that there are always stories in the news, um, students will hear them, and you tend to pick up on those things and try and bring them into the lesson. We had an example of Leeds Football Club, so it just gives you like what could happen in real life. Situations are easy to relate to, so you understand them more. Obviously, you know when you mention football, certain people in the room will switch off. Girls typically will go on football and they'll switch off. So you might try and find another example. and You might bring two examples into the lesson and perhaps look at one for the assets and another one for the liabilities. David rounds things up by focusing on the fundamental purpose of a balance sheet. The question then becomes one of what does a balance sheet actually reveal and what does it not tell you about the business? What does this tell us about a business, this balance sheet? That uh, it's healthy and it's not in risk of being bankrupt. What else will it tell me about a business? You know that they owe some money to people, but you don't know who to. So we do actually know from the balance sheet whether it's got cash, whether it's got debtors, and perhaps more importantly, whether it's got any stock, or in this case, merchandise in the club shop. Balance sheets tend not to reveal very much. And in getting the students to identify answers to questions that, that are impossible to work out from a balance sheet, what you actually get them to do is get them to understand the very few things that actually a balance sheet is useful for doing. What else don't we know? It's profit or loss. You know no, nothing at all about its profit or loss. There is nothing on that board at the moment that tells me how much profit this company has made, will make, whether it's lost any money. Balance sheet isn't designed to do that. So the balance sheet is a little bit limited in terms of what it can tell, but it's limited because it focuses on a very specific um, point and that is what's going on here okay the difference between your current assets and your current liabilities because although we use the balance sheet to look at the value of the company what we really want to know is in the next 12 months will this company still be around will it survive how likely is it to have some financial difficulties in looking at it from the opposite point of view it reinforces what they do know a balance sheet actually does reveal and does teach you so you again reinforcing some of the early message the original objectives of the lesson which is what is the purpose of a balance sheet. And don't forget that David's lesson plans and other helpful tips can be found on the Teachers TV website.